Hi, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, what they're asking us to do is to sketch the solid whose volume would be given by this iterated integral. And then when we're done with that, we're also supposed to rewrite this integral using the indicated order of integration. So you can see I have that for this particular problem. They're just asking us to mix up your differential elements, mix up the order. Okay, we'll address that when we get to it. But the first thing they ask us to do, they challenge us to do, is to sketch the three-dimensional object, the, the, the solid, whose volume would be given by this integral. And uh, what it really comes down to, both parts of this problem, come down to knowing your limits of integration and what corresponds to what, and then being able to see those values, especially in your drawing. Let's make sense of all of that. To start, it definitely does come down to knowing your um, limits of integration and what goes with what. So when you look at any iterated integral like this, remember that you start on the inside. So my z variable corresponds to that innermost uh, integration symbol. And so in terms of limits of integration, z is going to go from 0 to y squared. Okay? Take a step out. And the y variable is going to go no lower than negative 1 and no higher than 0. And your last step out is the x variable will go no lower than 0 and no higher than 1. Okay? Now to get a feel for what my solid looks like, I'm going to try to write inequalities that represent exactly the statements that I just, I just made about x and y and z. Let me write those down. We had said that x is between 0 and 1. It goes no lower than 0, and it goes no higher than 1. As a compound inequality, that's what that's going to look like. Let's do the same thing for each of the other variables. y goes no lower than negative 1, and no higher than 0. And finally, z goes no lower than 0, and no higher than y squared. And what those inequalities do for me is give me a visual. I have to draw the actual solid, but in my graph, I know what variables are going to be, you know, which variables are going to be bounded where. So for instance, x, no lower than 0, no higher than 1. On my x-axis here, this would be the positive direction, you're not going to have anything beyond the board because right, that's where my zero would be for x. And you're not going to have anything on this side of the uh, axes beyond the one on the x-axis. Right? Similar thinking, the second inequality, your lowest y value will be negative one. Here's your y-axis, and make sure you're seeing that uh, over here to the left is your negatives. So no lower than negative one, we won't draw any farther to the left than that y equals negative one and y should be no bigger than 0, so that means I'm not going to draw anything to the right of this z-axis, because that would be y being positive, and I'm not going to do that. And then finally, this z expression, no lower than 0, that's not too difficult in terms of visualizing. That means you're not going down below floor level. If my z is my up and down variable, don't go lower than floor level. And how high up are you going? y squared. That you might not see quite yet, but I'm actually going to do some work on that. In order to see that, let's take that, uh, let's actually take that or equal to part of the inequality and write that as an equation. So in order to see this upper bound, I'm going to write that as an equation. And now, actually, I see it already in this case as a parabola. Right. Specifically, a parabola in the uh, yz plane. So I'm going to draw, actually, right on the board is my yz plane. And I'll draw a parabola. Join me if you will. But I'll warn you that you might want to do it in pencil. As I draw my parabola and then keep going, I'm actually going to stop and erase because now I'm trying to tie the inequalities together. And remember that we said y will not be any bigger than 0. So you're not going to be any farther to the right than the z-axis. So I can actually erase this right branch of my parabola. So let's do that a little bit there. All right, now let's start putting together the uh, other parts of our solid, looking at these inequalities. And I'll 
I'll even grab a straight edge here to be kind of, to try to be kind of neat, I guess. X goes from zero to one on the X axis, no deeper into the board than right here. And I'll draw that. I'm going to draw it as a dashed line. You don't have to put too much thought into this. I mean, if you drew solid, you're going to be fine, but I'm thinking ahead and that's going to be like the back part of my solid. Um, X is only supposed to come up to a one. So, uh, outward for me to this one on the X axis and I'll draw that as solid line actually. Looks like I erased parts of my dash line with the uh, straight edge. The um, Y condition is that uh, it's not going to be any lower than negative one, which means I'm not going to be any farther to the left than this negative one, which means for me, I'm going to connect the dots, not literally dots, but from here to here. And I'm actually doing as a dash line again, because I'm seeing that that's going to be like a back part of my solid. And then Y is also supposed to be no bigger than zero. And that's going to be right here. I'm going to make that a solid guy. And then that uh, condition on Z again, where it doesn't go any higher than the parabola, what I'm going to try to do is draw this parabola at the front corner as well. I'm going to kind of copy that guy there, see if I can do a decent job of shadowing it up like that. Well, I don't know, not too bad maybe. Let's finish this off. Now really kind of like connecting the dots, sort of. I'm gonna go from like here to here. All right. I do need to go from here to here, where uh, what Y is negative one. And also here where Y is negative one, but X is zero. And that would be like a dash, dash, dash line. And I think I've actually got it. It's always hard to draw in three dimensions, but decent representation of these inequalities. And it looks kind of like a skateboard ramp or something like that. Okay. First half of the problem, uh, trying to draw that solid. And you need that in order to finish the problem. If you remember, they asked us to um, rewrite this integral using a different order of integration. And what that's going to come down to, as I said to begin with, is focusing on which variables which and what the corresponding um, limits of integration are going to be. Okay, so this is still going to be a triple iterated integral, but let me leave the limits of integration blank for a second, and then throw in that dy, dz, dx that they gave me. And now I go in order my y variables first. So this inner integration symbol, I want to put limits of integration on it. And I got to think about the y variable. Let's go back to the drawing. And if you look at your y variable, how far, do, what you're thinking is how low does it go? How high does it go? How low is as far to the left as that negative one? Come over here, negative one. How high does it go? What's going to be your upper limit? If you're looking at your y axis, I'm trying to go, po uh, not positive, but in the positive direction. And what I'm going to hit first is that sloped part of the uh, skateboard ramp. Okay, So the highest y values are going to be right on that parabola, which means I need to express this parabola uh, in terms of z. I need it as a function of z. So what I'm going to do is just a little bit of algebra, solve for y. This is actually a very, very little bit of algebra. Square root both sides. Okay. And since I square rooted both sides, I introduced the plus or minus algebraically. But specifically for us, I'm going to write we want, we only want y equals the negative square root of z. How do I know that? Ties back into these inequalities. Remember, we said that y is going to be no bigger than zero. So y can't be the positive version of this square root. So y is equal to the negative square root of z. Let me come back over here. That is my upper limit of integration for the innermost integral. Now I go to the dz, the z variable. So for my second integration symbol, I'm going to look at the z values. Again, I always think how low, how high, and for the z axis, you're going you know, down and up, straight up and down axis. You're going as low as zero, and as high as 1. So 0 to 1 
for my limits of integration there. And then finally, the x variable, looking at my drawing, how low does x go? That's your zero again. And then how high does x go? I'm coming out this way, and I only go out as far as a one, so zero to one for those limits as well. All right, hope that helps you. Try some on your own.